everybody welcome to Susan's Craft Cabin. Uh, today I thought I'd like to show you how to make a very simple uh, little lampshade with a gathered top on an old lampshade frame. I've used vintage fabric on the outside and a contrast floral fabric on the inside so it's actually lined. I'll put a list at the end of this video of everything you need to make one of these lampshades but not measurements because each frame will be different. But I'll show you how to do that as we go along. So I'm going to bind the frame, the top and the bottom. Then measure around the bottom of your frame and then double it. So if it's 10 inches around, you need a piece of fabric 20 inches. If it's 20 inches, you need a piece 40 inches and so on. So I've measured mine and I've cut out two pieces of fabric that I like. This particular piece I didn't have quite enough so I cut out two pieces and sewed them together on the sewing machine to give me the length that I needed. Having done that I'm going to join them together right sides together, right sides together and I'm going to stitch at the top and at the bottom on the sewing machine. So I've done that. I've stitched the two pieces together at the top and the bottom and now I'm just going to trim all the excess fabric next to the stitching lines. You want to get as close as you can because you want to have a nice crisp edge. So now, so now I've sewn those two pieces together and I've cut off the excess fabric, I'm going to turn it the right way round, like a pillowcase. The reason I've used two pieces of fabric is because I want the shade to be lined and it adds a lovely fabric underneath. If you sit underneath the shade you can see the lining which, which is really pretty. So I've done that and now I'm going to press it with a hot iron. I've stitched both the pieces together, turned them the right sides round and given them a good press and now I'm going to create a channel for my elastic. I'm going to use elastic here and the easiest way to create a channel is to draw two parallel lines in wherever, whichever position you want, could be very close to the top or you could do them a little bit further down, it's up to you. So I'm just going to use a piece of wood and I'm going to allow by eye about an inch and a half for the top piece and I'm just going to draw it with a pencil. You can measure this properly if you wish. This is just a demonstration. And you can use French chalk or pencil, it really doesn't matter. So I've drawn my first line there and I'll draw another one because this elastic is very narrow elastic. You could use thicker elastic so you need to sew a channel that is wide enough to take your elastic. I'm just using things that are handy around the house. You don't need anything special. You do need a sewing machine. Right, so I've got my two parallel lines and now I'm going to just use a running stitch from the machine along each of those lines to create a channel for the elastic. So now what we're going to do is feed our elastic through the channel. I have threaded my elastic onto a needle with a big eye and then you simply feed it through all the way to the other end. 
I've threaded my elastic through the channel and I'm going to leave a good sort of six inches at either end. And now I'm going to join these two sides together to stitch from the top to the top of the channel and then from the bottom of the channel to the bottom of the shade fabric. And then when we've pulled it tight, we'll fix this bit. So I'm going to do that now on the sewing machine. So I've stitched the sides together and now I'm just going to trim off all the threads. If you want to, you can do a zigzag stitch at the, up along this edge in order to neaten it or if you're lucky enough to have an overlocker and you're very careful that you could stitch it with the overlocker. I've stitched down the sides and neatened the edges and now I'm going to turn the shade the right way round. So there we are. And just pull off any loose threads that you see. So there we go. So what we're going to do now is start to pull the elastic and pull it really quite tightly in order to give you some lovely pleats. At this point, when you've pulled a few pieces through, tie it in a knot and then you you don't have to worry about the, the edges, the ends, losing the ends. Keep pulling. And then you're going to put it over the frame and you want the edge where you've got your elastic to actually just be below the rim of the shade. So keep pulling until you pull all your lovely gathers in place. And it's really just pulling and pulling the elastic until you get a fit on the top. Pull the gathers around as you work. Makes a very, very pretty lampshade and a very simple lampshade really to make. So once you've done that and you've got your shade, pin it in position. Pin where you're going to, to just do a little running stitch onto the binding. Make sure your gathers are even. Pull them all the way around. It takes a bit of time. I've pulled the gathers into position all the way around and now I'm going to just gently stitch the inside channel, the inside fabric onto the binding like so. You can actually go through from one side to the other into the binding, making sure you catch the binding. Just a simple stitch, just to keep it all in position. So you're stitching through the binding 
through the elastic and back into the binding all the way round. So through the binding, through the elastic and out the other side. Through the elastic and into the binding all the way round just to attach it to the frame. Keep doing that. So when we come to the elastic, now I'm just going to chop it off and I'm going to just tie it off really tightly with a knot. And then I'm going to trim tiny bits and the elastic will now disappear into the channel. And I'll continue to sew all the way around through the elastic into the binding, creating this really pretty little Victorian lampshade. I've stitched through the elastic into the binding all the way around the top on from the outside to the inside and to finish it off I'm going to use this lovely ribbon and tie it around into a beautiful bow so that's all we're going to do all the way around and make it into something beautiful What you want to do is to make sure that your ribbon covers all the stitching lines. And the best, easiest way to do that is to pull it tight at the front and just to pin it into position. And now those pieces are in place and in the right place. You can tie a lovely bow at the front. So there we have a very pretty little lampshade. I think these lampshades are sometimes called scrunchy lampshades because the top frill is like a scrunchie. But it's very simple to make and I have lined it as you see with that other lining which looks absolutely beautiful and just finished it off with a very simple little bow. So I hope you enjoy making it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.